Hey everyone, I'm Mark, and today I'll be giving you my initial impressions on Square Enix's new nostalgia-filled JRPG Octopath Traveler based on its recent demo. Project Octopath Traveler is a new JRPG made by the Bravely Default team. Much like those games, Octopath Traveler tries to capture the essence of an old RPG while still trying to stay fresh and relevant. The way they've tried to accomplish this is with its protagonist system. At the start of the demo, you are given a choice of which story you'd like to play through. Each character has a different background and motivation, and starts in a different part of the world. There are only two characters in the demo, but the full game promises eight, hence the working title. The two characters on offer initially seem basic, but there is more to who they are. The dancer, for example, is driven by revenge, and uses her profession as a sort of cover to gain information while remaining discreet. The warrior is a little more basic, but he's older than most traditional RPG protagonists, and is living a relatively quiet life after he had his moment in the sun from his youth. Both stories are a little more complex than that, but I don't want to give too much away. Each character also behaves differently in the general exploration segments. Each playable hero has a unique skill they can use to progress through certain areas, and most likely find a few secrets in the full game. The warrior can duel people for experience and money, while the dancer can allure people so she can proceed or gain information. It's a fun take on traditional formulas, as I'm sure the full game will make full use of each character's skills for problem solving. The actual combat is a bit of a lighter version of Bravely Default. Battles take place in a turn-based format with the same general structure of a JRPG. You have basic attack, defend, and abilities commands. However, you also have the boost system. At the start of your turn, you gain one boost point or BP. BP can be spent to increase the power of your selected action. For example, stocking up two BP and attacking will have your character attack twice. Spells and skills will also be more potent. This system is a necessity as in the demo your party consists of one character and the enemies have a special defense gauge. These are represented by shields and numbers and you must hit the enemy with the right type of attack to break their guard. Guard breaks leave the opponent stunned and vulnerable allowing you to strike back in full force. Knowing what your opponent is weak against is vital and in the warrior's case trial and error as you can swap weapon type each turn. It's a fun system and I hope it's expanded upon in the full release. It's also a difficult game, as it doesn't pull any punches when you're trying to come to terms with this combat system. Octopath Traveler is also very striking. Utilising a 16-bit elevated perspective like many SNES games, Octopath is able to evoke a similar charm. However, what sets it apart is that the game is HD, and uses some clever 3D environments and blur to create beautiful vistas and towns. Caves are especially cool, with dim flickers from your lantern as you explore multi-tiered environments. The sprite work is also fantastic in and out of combat. There's just enough detail in the game to tell what's going on, and it also feels like it's poking fun at itself with the dancer mesmerizing people with their subtle motions, which the player clearly cannot see because it's 16-bit. The voice work is also pretty good, which is great as it still seems early in development and also something I wouldn't expect from a game that looks this old school. The soundtrack is also fantastic, and I feel like I'll be humming quite a few songs by the time I finish the full release. Octopath Traveler came out of nowhere, and it definitely sets itself apart from its competition by being as retro as it is. It's something to pay attention to, and while it may not be a reason to buy a Switch, it may prove to be a fun addition to the growing console's library. I hope you liked that video, stick around to Gamecast for more great gaming content. You can also find more from me over at Arisen Culture or right here as part of the review team. Until next time, bye!